had they been born a few years earlier into a different family, Dad. in a different country, okay. have they been diagnosed? Have they been always on diet and formula? It is undeniable these two bubbly happy souls will be leading normal healthy lives today with all prospects of exploiting their full potential. George Wright from Bath was a healthy promising kid, so tells us Jimmy Cabindo his father. Just like any other newborn child, he had minor health challenges, but when he started regressing and failed to hit important growth milestone, disability assessment was suggested. We were told he's uh, autistic and he also had some elements of uh, cerebral palsy, that's what we were told with George. Because that time he could not be able to walk, he could not be able to feed, he could not be able to stand on his own. So many things he could not be able to do. Just like any parent, they did everything in their power to make sure their firstborn son became well. They took him for therapy sessions, but nothing seemed to work. They were told that their son had autism. <laughs> they decided to have another child, but unluckily, the mother Alice Ngendu had a miscarriage of twins seven months into pregnancy. They never gave up and tried again and got Angel. The diagnosis hit her hard. Sasa wakati ni rimpereka Kenyatta, daktari yaka niambia, this is a special child. Iyo kitu wa ikuwa rahisi. Nakini nikasema mungu, kama unaona midi onatosha kupata hawa toto waina hivo, the Kabindus now had two special children. The number of house elves who had run away due to the burden of taking care of the kids were uncountable. Their finances were fast running dry. They sought a second opinion in India. And within three days of their arrival, what took the local Medicare more than a decade to diagnose was given a new name. If we had known this right from the beginning, they would be quite okay. And that is the time for the first time we were given this new name called phenylketonuria. Children born with phenylketonuria or PKU like George and Angel have very low or no level of an enzyme a body needs to process protein. The food most of us eats every day are actually dangerous for them. Too much protein can cause brain damage. Newborns with PKU initially don't have any symptoms, unlike a diabetic who can control their glucose level by changing what they put in their mouth. This metabolic diet is like their medical food. They are a prescription that has to be adhered to from birth till death. Without it, the physiological consequences are devastating. New management was put in place. So, number one, we are given out that strict metabolic diet. We look for that. Uh, phenyl free formula when you came back it was not there in Kenya number two we make sure the food that we give the kids is uh, free from now the proteins and number three we undertake a lot of therapy managing PKU is very expensive a piece we did a few months ago on the exorbitant price of drugs in the country and the cartels in the pharmaceutical world comes into mind Jimmy knows this too well what is this that would cost medicine in India to be within the range of 1,000? And in Kenya, it goes within the range of 8,000. A whole 7,000 difference. The local Medicare was to blame. Dr. Pauline Samia, a child neurologist, alludes to this fact. Um, regarding diagnosis, it has a lot to do with our training right from the beginning. Are our hospitals, you know, because of course you know we are trained in hospitals, are our hospitals equipped to train us to those levels? Um, I sum up our case in two words, case of ignorance and to some extent misdiagnosis. No one feels the pinch of stigma of mentally challenged children more than a mother. For Alice, it is twice. Tena kwa neighbors, walikuwa na sema mambo mingi, yenye ilikuwa inanifuja moyo. Gina wanasema anyonyeshagi mtoto, apati mtoto cha uh, balanced diet. PKU is one of the rare diseases that falls within the inborn errors of metabolism. The sad thing about it is that nothing can be done to a child who has reached this age. But newborn screening can go a long way in treatment and management of such diseases. So if we had screening of PKU, 
this single drop could have told us right within 72 hours that your kid is normal, your kid is, kid is okay, quite healthy. Dr. Samia is a little bit reluctant to give this a full green light. There are certain things, especially so where you're able to intervene, yes, you really must screen for this, you know. I know it's not happening in all our hospitals, but ideally something like that should happen. There are questions about, um, you know, screening all patients for all, you know, for as many conditions. Is it viable? The former ICT specialist has now started poultry farming as a way to raise money to support his children. <laughs> Quality of life for everyone with this condition depends on decisions being made. If nothing is done, the burden on the society is going to be undeniably huge. Both of these kids are still fully dependent on their parents. With proper medical care and management, they can live a good life. Oh, Maunyango, reporting for Talkers on KGTV, Nairobi.